Hey folks, it's me, Breadbeard, the rising star of BreadTube. So what is BreadTube, you ask? Well, that's a great question. So if anyone knows, could you fill me in? I've narrowed it down to either some kind of blockage tactic for invasive oil pipelines or exploding biscuit containers. To be honest, both of them kind of sound useful during a revolution. So am I a part of BreadTube? Honestly, I don't know. And I really kind of don't care. Sure, most of the creators I watch and sometimes collaborate with are leftist content creators, and I myself am an anarcho-communist. I mean, I have leftist values, so it kind of makes sense that I tend to talk and work with people who have similar values and goals, right? Like, you probably wouldn't expect a cooking channel to spend most of their time talking to carpenters. Cheese. Bacon. Got my eggs here. I need a bowl there. I need a mixer. No mucking around, bro. Just get it done. I'm eventually still on the way. Huh. So if that puts me in the category of bread tube, then sure, whatever. Categorize this channel however you want. It isn't like I signed up to be in some cool kid club. That's the joke. And it's not like I had some initiation ceremony to make me an official bread tuber. And the other one. You are now a communist sandwich. <laughs> Welcome aboard. You're now a bread tuber. Thus ends the ceremony of bread. And we now stand before you. An official, newly minted intern of BreadTube. <laughs> hmm. Regardless, when I decided to start making videos, it was because there were some things that I felt were very important to me that I wanted to talk about. Things like understanding intersectionality, feminism, LGBTQ plus rights, indigenous rights, rights for people with disabilities, and yeah, political leftism. Because I believe communism is the tool that we need to achieve those rights. And all of these, to me, revolve around one core concept, compassion. Because to me, the fight for socialism is the fight for compassion for our fellow humans. It's the fight to ensure that everyone is cared for and cared about, and that no one has the ability to hold power over another. But compassion for humanity isn't a bribe or a reward. It isn't something we can withhold until someone's proven their worth. It isn't a prize we lock in a secret hidden chest and only graciously give out after someone has earned their communist street grid. That's what I believe and that's what I made this channel to promote. Recently, I was a guest on a live stream where we were talking about kindness and compassion. In it, we talked about methods and reasons for having compassion and self-reflection and even some talk about meditation. Overall, I thought it was a great conversation. Sadly, due to technical problems, it was cut short. Not sadly, we're planning to pick the conversation back up very soon on another stream, so keep your eyes peeled for that. Why do people even say that? Who's out there peeling eyeballs? Nope. No. That's Thought Slime. Alright, fine. I'll do my own shoutouts. Speaking of compassion on the left, did you know that you can be a Christian and a communist? I mean, kinda makes sense, since Jesus was all about flipping over moneylenders' tables. To learn more about all kinds of goodness and godness, check out Damon Garcia. I really appreciate his fair look at religion, good and bad, in relation to leftism. If you're looking for a good place to start, check out his video on Christian socialist Martin Luther King Jr. But he was always a socialist. When he was 23, he wrote in a love letter to Coretta Scott, I am much more socialistic in my economic theory than capitalistic. And he also said, capitalism has outlived its usefulness. And so if you're going to come out as a socialist, uh, the best place to do it perhaps is in a love letter. You can find Damon on YouTube or streaming on Twitch as I am Damon. Links to both in the description. Now back to dealing with some less charitable takes. And sadly, yet again, there was a lot of pushback to the conversation in the live stream chat. Pushback that I personally found to be rather toxic. There were a lot of comments calling self-reflection bourgeois liberal nonsense. And some folks afterwards on Twitter, the bastion of respectable discourse, found our talk of kindness and empathy to be counter-revolutionary. So what is it about compassion that seems counter-revolutionary? I think, or at least I hope, that it comes down to miscommunication. And since disconnect can come from both ends, I'll try to clarify the best I can about my end. When I say compassion and kindness, it doesn't mean unconditional civility. Compassion doesn't mean civility. Compassion doesn't mean civility. Compassion means understanding what someone is going through and also working to improve their conditions that they're in. 
because you care about what they're going through and what you're going through yourself as well. So it comes in two parts, analysis and understanding, then acting upon your findings. Or since the left loves smarty pants words, theory and praxis. Studying and understanding conditions and the root causes that lead to them is extremely important, but it isn't enough. And I think this is where some of the disconnect happens. It's understandable that if you listen to someone just talking about universal love and compassion, it can come off pretty naive sounding. I mean, it does kind of sound just like a bunch of new age hippie bullshit. And if you were to go find your nearest beach bonfire full of Rasta beanies, blonde dreads, and ketamine, you'll probably hear a lot of similar sounding things. It's true that the wellness and self-help industries have recuperated the concept of compassion to great benefit. So I understand when people have concerns when they hear someone talk about these things. But just because a concept gets stolen and corrupted for profit, it doesn't mean the original message isn't still valid. Go look at any college campus covered in dude bros wearing Che Guevara t-shirts because like, he was a rebel man, wasn't he from like, Mexico or something? Does that mean discussing Guevara and how he relates to material struggles now is useless bourgeois bullshit? No. The truth is, compassion, empathy, and self-reflection are vital to understanding what we're fighting for, and for understanding those that haven't yet joined us. If our response to those without class consciousness is simply, fuck you, neolib, then what hope is there that they'll eventually come around? Without understanding the reasons for pushback to our message, how can we expect to bring more people to class consciousness? This is the core of mutual aid. Why should we aid others if not because we have compassion for them, and we know they hold compassion for us? We build community protection because we empathize with those that need protection, as we may need protection ourselves. Without understanding and compassion for our fellow workers, and even beyond that to all of humankind, then our fight is not to lift each other up, but simply to take revenge on those that have wronged us. And revenge can turn a revolution into nothing more than self-gratification. Revolution without compassion leads us back to I got mine, to new oppressors of the new oppressed. Self-reflection and empathy lets us analyze what our goals are, because a revolution built on an eye for an eye does not end with an egalitarian society. On mutual aid and revenge, Pyotr Kropotkin wrote, In the early movements of the reform, and especially in the ethical and philosophical movements of the last century and of our own times, the total abandonment of the idea of revenge, or of due reward, of good for good and evil for evil, is affirmed more and more vigorously. The higher conception of no revenge for wrongs, and of freely giving more than one expects to receive from his neighbors, is proclaimed as being the real principle of morality a principle superior to mere equivalence, equity, or justice, and more conducive to happiness. The goal of our revolution must be to end as much suffering as possible. And if you are not reflecting on yourself constantly to ensure you are coming from a place of compassion, you risk straying from that goal. You risk harm to others, including and most likely to your comrades. Yes, we should be talking about tactics. Yes, we should be talking about taking to the streets, but that's not all there is to discuss. We must talk about our material needs, but also our personal and interpersonal needs as well, because they're all connected. Are thoughts that don't center around Molotovs and guillotines simply invalid? So this is some real nice theory, but what about the second part? What about praxis? Well, as I said before, keeping compassion in your heart as you fight for a better world doesn't mean passivity. Or to quote myself again, Compassion doesn't mean civility. None of this means that I'm not angry at capitalists, abusers, and exploiters. It doesn't mean that I forgive the abuse that they inflict, and it does not mean I am against stopping the harm they inflict, violently if necessary. What if I were to tell you that you can care about the well-being of everyone while still holding them accountable? Crazy, right? You can fight for a world where everyone Everyone has a chance to be treated fairly and just, while still doing whatever is necessary to ensure equality and safety, because everyone's accountable. You, me, your boss, your boss's boss, Guy Fieri, and of course the Fash. Guy Fieri actually seems like a really nice guy, everyone. Maybe we should lay off of him. But he is still accountable for them shirts. We're all accountable as a species. If any of us want to harm others based on who they are, then we should be held accountable. 
those that have already shown themselves to be oppressors are just more easily identifiable. If I've led anyone to believe that I simply want to hold hands and sing Kumbaya to let love fix the planet, let me make this as clear as possible. It is possible to understand and empathize with the reasons why a fash ended up the way they are, and then still give them a knuckle high five to stop them from doing further harm. Anyone leaving comments saying that I think we should hug everyone until love fixes everything is just getting a timestamp to that statement. This is real. This is material. To achieve an egalitarian world where everyone's needs are met, we have to be able to understand ourselves and others, and use our findings to plan our methods. We can go up against cops and military head-on with their rather sizable armory and full backing of the government, or we can understand the kind of people who are attracted to jobs that allow them to commit violence with impunity. We can understand the often toxic upbringings they've come from which created someone who feels the need to hold authority over someone else. We can understand the coercion done by military recruiters to broke kids just wanting a job in college funding. Do they get a free pass for any harm they do? Nah. But we can understand how they got there, and we can work to dismantle the system that coerces them into it. Sounds a lot more effective to me than grabbing a bunch of rifles and going up against tanks and predator drones. Self-reflection helps us keep clarity of mission, and for many, meditation can be a powerful tool in this, though it's far from the only method. Compassion and understanding reminds us that we are one species, but many of us have been coerced or misled. It helps us build communities rather than enemies when possible, and helps us understand enemies when they do appear. We don't have to love our oppressors, but we can't lose focus of the cause that led them there, and we must maintain our love for the interconnection we have to all of humankind. These are concepts that were understood long before capitalism, before colonialism, and before ruling class coercion. Many cultures and communities still hold these values, and we should be listening to them and working to remind the entire world of them. The rest of that Kropotkin quote goes like this. Sorry for the gendered language, different time and all that. Man is appealed to be guided in his acts not merely by love, which is always personal or at the best tribal, but the perception of his oneness with each human being. In the practice of mutual aid, which we can retrace to the earliest beginnings of evolution, we thus find the positive and undoubted origin of our ethical conceptions. And we can affirm that in the ethical progress of man, mutual support, not mutual struggle, has had the leading part. In its wide extension, even at the present time, we also see the best guarantee of a still loftier evolution of our race. So is compassion counter-revolutionary? No. It's essential to it. It's essential to understanding our enemies, ourselves, and our comrades now and yet to be. Without it, we're just fighting to be the dog on top. Without compassion, why are we even doing this? The candidate must, of their own volition, choose to bring their own loaf of bread. And so, Breadbeard, you have passed the first test. Oh boy. That was a heavy one, wasn't it? That's one of those videos that gets nothing but productive and uplifting comments, that's for sure. Well, anyways, thanks for watching. If you didn't hate it, or you did, but it's kind of your kink, make sure to do all the liking and subscribing and tickle that notification bell down there. You can share this too, if you like getting heated arguments in your replies. Thanks to all my supporters who helped me make it possible. You can help me keep making these videos too by going to patreon.com slash softboysocialclub and get your name up here too, along with all kinds of other neat stuff. You don't even have to hug me to join, but you can if you want. Okay, it's creepy enough now. Bye.